All right, hello there. Welcome to Girl Directors Mac 101, the Mac basics. So, so you've got a new Mac. You've either swapped over from your PC or you have a new Mac. So I just wanted to give you a little bit of an insight at what you're in for using a Mac and hopefully just help you to navigate around your new machine uh, to give you more confidence so that then you can create and get on with creating some stuff. Um, Macs are fantastic because they were built for visual people. They were built for people that want to do things with visuals, with photos, with videos, with design. Um, a lot of the functionality of Mac is very user friendly. Um, and, you know, I'm not, I'm, I am biased, I guess, to, to Mac. I used to have a PC and I've used PCs at different TV stations and I've found that Macs are great. Very, very instinctive, especially for this kind of work. So, um, I just wanted to go through some basics with you and to start with um, basically every single Mac that I've ever had has an Apple up here on the top left and you'll always find that whenever you want to know anything about your computer so if you want to have a look at what your machines what kind of software it's running or anything like that you go to about this Mac okay and that'll tell you some information about your machine um, also, then we want to go to the App Store, we want to go to any software updates that need to be done, and this is where you want to reboot your machine. Uh, so every time you need any of those things, you want to go up to the top left to the Apple button. And whatever software you're running or whatever, it's always there. That's the great thing about a Mac is that it always has really good um, menu structures. You always find the same kind of things up the very top. You'll always find file up the very top. Um, so moving along just quickly, because I can go on for a long time, I would just want to give you some more basics and talk about system preferences. So system preferences, I'll go through and just talk a little bit about each thing. So system preferences is where anything that you want to talk, when, when you want to have a look at your machine, what's going on, this is where you'll find it. So firstly, general that's all about looks and all about different things to make your machine look good. You can choose different colors, highlight colors. Um, you want to change your desktop screen screensaver. You can do all of that type of thing here. So we've got different pictures that we can load into the desktop. As you can see now, I've just got the, the traditional Mac um, Storm, which I love, which is my background. Um, so anything to do with the look of feel of your Mac is all in system preferences. Um, when it comes to your dock, now what's a dock you may ask? A dock is, see that thing down the bottom here where you can see me running through? That's called a dock. And what that is, is it keeps all of your icons and all of your applications that you use quite frequently it keeps a little print of it down the bottom so that it's a shortcut for you to go into those applications. So if you need to go into something and you use it quite often, then I would put it down the bottom into that little area and I'll show you how to do that later. So that's what your dock is and you can actually make those icons smaller or larger. Um, you can actually position them different places on the screen. So they're very important things for you to navigate around your screen. Okay, going back to there's mission control, which is just shortcuts around the machine. I have them all turned off. I'm a bit old fashioned when it comes to using my machine. I use a, a Wacom pen and a tablet, so I'm used to drawing and doing things with my machine. So <clears throat> I don't actually have these turned on. Um, then we've got security and all those types of things. They're not that important right now. Um, what we do want to go through is you've got also displays so you want to turn your brightness up and things like that we go there um, you've got sound printers scanners things like that they're all in the hardware okay so we've got also we've got mail we've got the network sharing Bluetooth if there's anything wrong with your Bluetooth or anything with your network you can go here um, and then we go down to system and this is where you've got all kinds of things like time machine which is your backup system so if you wanted to back your machine up this is where you'd press time machine and as long as you've got an external drive plugged into your machine you can press that button um, 
Okay, so that's a little bit, and there's date and time and things like that. I'm just going to close that now. I'm just going to also close my email so that it doesn't keep coming up. All right, so that's that's a couple of little things. Um, also, you want to talk a bit about Finder. Finder is this sort of thing down here, and it, what it is, it, it gives you a window so that you can have a look at your computer and, and find things. So Finder helps you find things. Funny that. Um, also, Finder lets you do things like new folders and things like that. So if you go File, New Folder, see how it's put a folder on my desktop? You can title that. Um, it's always good to keep your desktop really, really clean um, and free of stuff because it can get it can slow your machine down. So if you've got a really sluggish, slow machine and you've got lots of stuff on your desktop, and I mean absolutely covered with things, then that might be a reason that your mach machine is quite sluggish. So I'm just going to get rid of that folder now. Okay. All right, so... Just going over the desktop, what is a desktop? A desktop is what you see here, it's your desk. And like I was just saying, it's really important to have that desktop clean. And I like to have it very well ordered. I usually, on my desktop, I will put a folder called um, Rachel Drop. Um, I've got a feel good folder for kind of, you know, life boards and vision boards and all that kind of thing on there. I've got all kinds of things that we're working on at the moment. Uh, as well as slides for this presentation. And um, I like to always have my Macintosh hard drive on display here so I can always navigate where I am on the machine. Um, so on your desktop, this is this is your desktop, this whole area, this whole space. And um, it's good to get into the habit of if you save anything on your desktop, make sure you go and file it away and have good systems in place so that you don't get overwhelmed every time you open your computer. Um, also looking up here at the very top of your desktop, you've got here little icons at the very top here where my arrow is, you've got the time. See we can open date and time preferences if you want to change anything in regards to that time and make it um, a 12 hour clock instead of a 24 hour clock and things like that. We've got the Wi-Fi, we've got um, battery power, I've got my syncing to a backup, um, things like that. I've also got Bluetooth, cloud, and then of course we've got um, Camtasia running. That's why that little red icon's on. So they're just some of the some of the little basics. Um, and now I'm just going to show you a little bit about file structure. So. All right, going in here, I always have a very clean machine. I have my girl director folder, which is my username, and then I put everything in here. And I've got client folders, I've got um, L library images, library keynote, I've got topography, um, ideas, logos, style guides. Because I've, I've done so many years in the industry, I tend to keep libraries of things that I know that I'm going to use later on. And I also like to color code my files so that I can easily find them again. So libraries are grey because I use them all the time and I don't want them to stand out necessarily. So you can go up, see up the top here in this little viewer up the top. That there uh, lets you colour things. See, I can colour that any colour I like. And see this little window here, every time you open a new window, a new finder window, you'll get a new window with the same things at the very top. They're not different. So if you're a little overwhelmed when you first log on to your machine, you can find out that, see, every time you're going to get the same stuff up here. Now, if you want to change the look of that and put more things up there, because sometimes there's a few little things that's worth having a look at that you might need. So if you go to, um, I just have to remember here, if you go to this toolbar, let's have a look. Um... No, where is it? Label. Okay, window go. Okay, so customize toolbar. Sometimes that comes up in a menu at the top that I've had. So customize toolbar lets you have a look at what all these things are. So you can see, 
you know, there's eject, there's um, burn, there's quick look, there's all kinds of things, trash, there's all kinds of things that in, in case you might need them, okay? So if you need to, you can always move something over here or something, just drag and drop if you want to move anything around and then when you're happy, you can go done, okay? So that just again, if you want to change any of these things up here, you can go to view, customize toolbar and that brings up that little menu for you, okay? And that's where your colors are. So I highly recommend that if you want to make yourself a client folder, make yourself a library images folder, um, make yourself a library ideas folder, documents folder, um, movies folder, notes, and then in each folder I tend to put other things like in my images folder, I'll have all of these kinds of files. So I have animals, art, architecture, airport. These are all different stock images that I've collected over the years and I've kept them all in alphabetical order and whenever I think of something I'll put them in and if I haven't filed yet them yet I'll put everything into this folder here and you know the reason I put two asterisks at the very front of that is so that that actually is always at the top. If you ever put, if you notice I've got asterisks at the very front like over here it means that even though that particular folder has got a different capital letter than A so with an asterisk it always starts at the top for you so that's just something I do everybody's different in the way that they work but this is just the way that I do it that I find really easy for me so if any of these things help you then that's great um, now what's some other things that I can share with you okay so if you want to find anything in your Mac um, there's always a couple of ways to do it. You can go up here to your little magnifying glass up here on the top right and you can type up something. So say text. Okay, so we've got text edit has come up now. Or if you want to look for Rachel, there'll be lots of Rachels, whatever. So, and that means that you can just go show all in Finder and then it'll show you every single place where that is in your machine, which is pretty cool. And then you can just click on it and go to it. So that's, that's that. So that magnifying glass I always use all the time. The other thing that you can do is you can manually look for things and go, okay, what did I call that? <laughs> and you might have a look for stuff by going somewhere where you think you had that particular image. Um, so what else? Um, 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 um. So also good applications in the Mac and I'm just going to go through a few of the applications now is um, okay I've got Adobe some other little things that come with the machine is you've got your dictionary which comes in handy every now and then You've got um, your dashboard, you've got your DVD player, which is on some of the newer machines. You've got your iCal, uh, which is for you to plot anything. You've got Fontbook. Fontbook is a really good app. If you want to call that up and if, you're, if you like fonts and things like that, it's a really good way to have a look at your fonts. So once you open that up, everything, every little thing that comes up, you should be able to get a it'll open up down here in your dock. So it's up to you whether you want to keep it in the dock or not and if you don't, just when you close that particular application it'll just shut. Otherwise if you want to keep it in the dock down the bottom you've got to go option keep in dock. Okay and that will keep that particular program there for you. So this particular font book is how you look at fonts in your machine. So if we go over here to all fonts and we just bring up this little thing up the top here we can start at the very top and if I use my arrow key I can flick down and I can see all the different fonts in my machine so it's pretty cool huh so if there's particular fonts that I like for girl director I can save them in here and actually what I can do here is see down here on the left I can actually add a folder and put in here Rachel 2015 
then that's a new folder and when I go back to all fonts I can actually say if I like uh, this one I can actually drag that into that so then when I actually go over to that folder you'll see that it's in there and I don't every time I go to that font book I can find these fonts easily by clicking onto that particular folder you don't have to do that but it's just a really good way quickly if you found a few fonts that you like in particular and you can keep going back to them so um, yeah that's that's kind of and I use a lot of what's called dingbats which are picture fonts and um, yeah they're pretty cool so I've got lots of fonts in here and that's yeah dingbats are cool because see you can use things like that icons and all kinds of things that you can get now for fonts so that just gives you a little bit of an idea of um, font, font book. It's really handy to choose fonts if you're looking for stuff. Um, what else is there? Um, applications, Safari is really good. I use Safari, you can use Firefox or Chrome. Safari is getting a little bit slow now. I still really like to use it, but it is still a little bit, um, a little bit yeah, flaky at times. Um, Safari, what I would say is whenever you open it up, if you want to save particular websites that you always go to, what you can do is you can save them up here. Like I've got everyday tabs. So these are tabs that I will go to every single day. So I'll go to Facebook, I'll go to Sandpaper, I'll go to different things. So here's tutorials that I might go to. Um, photography that might inspire me or you know things that I go to all the time so girl director so if there's stuff that you really like and that you want to keep going to I'll just show you how to put a little tab up there so what you do is you go over here to bookmarks and see favorites bar that's what that's called it's a favorites bar so what you want to do is you want to go in here to the favorites bar and you want to go into one particular folder and um, you want to save your bookmark in there so you can go done and it'll save that into there somewhere so as you can see that is how and then if you want to click on something again you just double click on it So, and then if you don't want to have that up anymore and display it, then take bookmark off. Okay, so you can see bookmark on, bookmark off. Home, that's a home button there, it's Safari. Um, you've got fonts as well, that's your downloads. That's the other thing I'll say is with your Mac, if you ever download something and you don't know where it's gone, it'll go into the downloads folder so everything will always go down to your downloads folder and you can always have a look at what you've downloaded by looking here in your little arrow that comes down and see what things you've actually downloaded and you can also just click on that magnifying glass and then find out where you've saved something so that's really handy to know too so that's a skyline I downloaded and you can just do that again so that is a safari right at the end here show downloads skyline I'll click the magnifying glass and it'll show me where it is so I click that and that's where I put it so that's in your downloads folder so hopefully that's given you a little bit of insight of how safari works I don't tend to use the other browsers very often um, what else here the other thing is that you want to get into the habit after a while. If your machine is really sluggish and playing up a little bit, a good thing to get into the habit of doing is to go into your disk utilities, which is in, see here, utilities, disk utilities. The other way you can find that is, again, go up to your magnifying glass up the top here and go disk utilities, util. utilities and it hasn't come up and made a liar of me 
Okay, don't do that then. Ah, oh, that's why disk with a C. Disk. Well, tell it's a long night. Disk utility C, there it is, application. So you, there's always two ways of finding things, either with a magnifying glass or going through to it. All right, so now you're in disk utilities. What you want to do is you want to click on the hard drive and you want to go repair disk permissions. Okay. It'll probably take about five minutes like it is. And what that does is it goes through every single file and I've done it actually recently tonight because my machine was a bit slow. So what happens is it goes through every single file and it actually repairs anything that's quite not right yet. So it will actually go through and it'll, it's a bit like um, if you've ever heard the term defrag. So what that means is it'll grab every file and it'll put it right next to each other again without having big bits of space in between when you're saving things on disk. Because often when you're saving stuff on a computer and you're erasing stuff and you're saving stuff and you're erasing stuff, there's lots of little gaps and things in the memory. So what what disk utilities does and defragging does, it actually takes all of your files and, you, and it's, it's like it, they put them all neatly back together again so that you can go through and delete and it kind of reduces the space almost that you've got, that you're using up. So, and it also just repairs any little niggly things that might be going on. So I actually do this quite a lot to my machine. I try and do it at least every couple of weeks or every month. Um, and it's just a good habit to get into just to just so, sorts out any little problems or anything that might be stopping your machine from performing its best. And then when it's finished doing its thing, it'll tell you. So let's just let that finish after three minutes and let that do its thing. And anytime you want to move things around your Mac, just grab it with your with your um, and drag it. So you want to just drag things with your little trackpad. Um, and if you ever want to close anything on your Mac, go up to the little cross. If you want to just put it in the dock down the bottom, you can hit your little cross there. That'll put that down there. Um, what else? Okay, we'll let that keep going. Um, the other things that you'll have is see down here in your favorites. This lets you say with if I want to put something new down there, it'll where whatever you've got, you can actually drag it on there. Say I've got something on my desktop, right? I'm going to grab it right now and I'm going to put it right there, which I don't think it did. Um, damn it, where'd it go? Yeah, I put it inside there. But can you see? Uh, there it is. See that? It's actually put it there for me. So whatever you've got on your desktop, you can actually drag over here and put it there. And if you want to get rid of it off the side, you can go Control, press that, remove. Control, press that, remove. So you press down Control and then you just, or you can just flick it off. Like press control, move. Okay, so remove, remove. Okay, so, and it's good to just have them on the side because that means that you, they're things that you always go to and that you always use. Okay, so, and I'll just get rid of that one as well. Great. Right, let's have a look how our disk utilities is going. It's still got three minutes left. Um, the other thing that I use a lot of is QuickTime. Uh, now, I tend to use QuickTime Pro 7. Um, I've also got the new one, but I actually really recommend, if you're doing stuff with video, to download QuickTime Player 7. You can still download it and get QuickTime Pro if you can because... I tend to do a lot of little things in QuickTime Movie that you can just get away with and do without having to go into iMovie or do any edits. I can do it in QuickTime Movie. So, for example, um, 
I could go in here and just grab a movie and let's see inspiring okay so I'll grab that particular movie drag it onto the icon at the bottom and it opens up let's close those see how I've opened this up I dragged it onto the icon so anything that you want to open up to it's another way that you can open things up is you actually drag it on top of the icon and it'll open up in that particular application so that's quite handy as well um, and so now can you see here at the bottom where you've got these you know you can actually do some really cool things so you can actually insert edits you can export having more advanced settings as well like you've got so much more control with what you're what you're doing whereas the new QuickTime only gives you like three settings whereas for me if I want to export movies to um, if I've got exp exporting movies to YouTube or anything then I want to go to QuickTime movie options and then I'll put in there 1280 by 720 um, H.264 codec and 5000 data rate. That's that's basically that's the settings that all of the, the social media out, outlets they all recommend. So um, it just QuickTime Pro gives you that option to do that. So that's another Mac function. Um, so and it's still going. I'm going to quit out of this because I have actually done this earlier. So you can. Don't be afraid, you can quit out of things, you can always go stop that, you know, just close it. It's not gonna it's not gonna hurt, but let it run if you can. The first time you do it, just let it run and it'll just say finished, complete, and then just shut the application. Okay. So um so that gives you a little bit of a basics 101 about the Mac. Hopefully that's helped you just navigate a little bit more. It's really all about practice, practice, practice embracing the machine and just if you need help get help the Mac stores often have some free training as well that you can go in and you can spend some time with one of the people there to go through certain applications and they have people with all different levels of of understanding so don't feel like you um there yeah, that you're alone there's a lot of people in the same boat Okay, so have fun and hopefully that's explained some new things for you and um, I'm sure we'll do some more uh, Mac 101 training soon. Okay, bye for now.